welcome to the Black Barnes MLK Day Open Mic. Two drink in it. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for braving the snow to come out here. I'm sure that there are, uh, I know at least one person messaged me that they're still trying to make it out. So, uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, at least open up with some remarks about MLK Day. Um, if you are not familiar with Black Barnes, Black Barnes is a Black Arts and Literature Collective. We are modeled after the Black Arts Collective of the Civil Rights Era. And uh, yeah, we just, we saw a, uh, a gap in Lawrence that there needed to be more uh, community and space making for black artists and writers. And so our collective has roughly 35 to 40 artists and writers at any given time that explore multiple different mediums from making jewelry, uh, like Sarah in our collective, or making music like me or Barry in our collective, or who are doing, uh, intensely amazing things in the writing world like like Anthony and so we have we have graphic uh, illustrators dancers etc so that's what our collective is about um, and we often put on programming to educate the community um, about things that are important within black culture and national holidays like MLK Day like Black History Month Juneteenth uh, Kwanzaa week. I know that there was just a programming recently around Kwanzaa with Ty Emery, also from our collective. So we enjoy doing that. We enjoy helping um, embrace these and, and spreading awareness in our community and helping educate people about what these days mean. And if you are not aware, um, NLK Day is based around Martin Luther King's birthday, which is January 15th. So this is a particularly special NLK Day because usually they pick the earliest Monday that is close to his birthday, but this is that and his actual birthday today. So definitely feel free to celebrate uh, twice as hard on account of that. This is his really his birthday today. Um, and as a musician, I love to tell people if um, a little unknown fact or lesser known fact was that Stevie Wonder's Happy Birthday song played a pivotal role in creating um, and establishing this as a national holiday. So. Uh, so that's why uh, I think it's really special to get to celebrate music on this day. And uh, Dr. King himself uh, often spoke about how important protest music and gospel music and all of these things were in his rhetoric and in his speech style. Um, he had an, an expository narrative speech style that, that was very much like a singer. And so he appreciated music. And so we'll be bringing some music to you today, me and Barry. Um, and some of the other people I seen that signed up online also were sharing music. So if they come or if they're already here. Um, but yeah, we do have some things coming up. Uh, but before I get into that, I'm going to invite Anthony and, and Barry, if you're interested. So we've been putting on monthly open mics at the Lawrence Art Center. And uh, within every first Friday of the month, and our next one is February, uh, is Friday, February 2nd, and we'll be at the 10th in Mass Studios space. But both of these folks have hosted some of those monthly open mics, and so I want to invite you both to maybe speak a little bit about how that those have gone, um, some highlights from them, what was maybe your favorite thing that you saw at one of the open mics, and maybe a little bit about your own work that you shared at those. Addie, uh, <clears throat> Barry Washboard Barnes, Barry Barnes, B by B. Um, the Black Lords open mics, or I mean, I've, I've been to like one of them, I've been to all of them. But um, we always, I always see somebody, something different, like um, you know, folk singers, um, of course, poets, and um, and um, what else? Just the the variety of people they come with their kids. Um, um, the art center has been very nice, um, and it's 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 a really cool thing. You should if you have a chance, you should check it out. Participate for real, for real. Um, <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andy Winton. I'm also my Anthony. My pronouns are he and they. Um, yeah, the, the open mics have been wonderful. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, I've been saying this a couple of different places. Before the pandemic, Lawrence had a kind of slew of open mics at a bunch of different uh, places.
places. Um, one was hosted by Jamil Jones at one point. She had moved. Um, there have been a couple others that have been hosted. Eve at the Raven, sometimes here even. Um, the percolator had them. Come on in if you would like. Um, so I'm grateful that over, across the last year or so, we've been seeing different entities of Lawrence, um, including Black Lawrence, um, host open mic nights, whether it be monthly, bi-weekly, whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely come out on February 2nd. Um, and you said work that we've been working on, things that we've been considering for ARC. Um, I've been kind of thinking of this because of the new year, um, whatever. Time is very faint for me, I'm Afrofuturist. Um, so I enjoy time travel, but today's the 15th. I know that only because it's Martin Luther King's birthday. <laughs> I literally only know that because of um, the birthday, but most of the days, yeah. Like I woke up this morning thinking it was Sunday. That's how fake it is. Um, but across the last year, I've been thinking, okay, like what actually all did happen? Um, and I realized I wrote two chat books. Um, and published one, um, and I've written my dissertation. <laughs> so, like, the, like, and so it's it's actually wild how much writing has actually happened across a year. Um, so yeah, and I'm actually ex excited to share some of the poetry from. Um, I've published the first chapbook, Witness, with the Spencer Museum of Art last year. Um, if you. Um, go to the Spencer Museum, you're able to just pick it up. It's called Witness. Oh, you have a copy. Wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's free. You can pick it up. Um, it's really just a um, kind of response to different pieces in the collection. Um, I have other poems that respond to other pieces in the collection, too, but we really want to like give a sample um, in some ways. The second um, chapbook is called Poems from the Fire. Um, it's really a response to, um, on one level, some of the ills, um, sides of this have been happening, um, but also I've grown a lot in the last um, year or so as a writer, as a thinker, as a teacher. Um, so some of the thinking and propagations come from that. Uh, Barry, did you want to expand a little bit about your work as well? Sure. <laughs> I never know what to say when, when, I'm, when I'm being interviewed. Um, so I, I'm a poet, so I, I write, I'm always writing, constantly writing. Um, my latest thing is um, I write, um, I don't even know what to call them, just like positive affirmations or just lines, and I'll write something down, and then I'll create some um, electronic art been really trying to get into that. And, um, and then using my loop station to create music, I'm a loop artist. Um, then I put all that together and make a TikTok. So I've been doing that a lot. And, um, and what else am I into? Oh, um, I play uh, Sajiko music. I play with Sajiko to go, Tommy Sherwood here. And we play here in Lawrence. We usually, you can usually catch us on a on a warm Friday night downtown on Ash Street. Um, I also play with a band called Ernest James I come in Kansas City. And um, with that band, me and Tommy play probably more folk or traditional type Americana, I would call it. And then with Ernest James, it's a it's a bigger band with the guitars and the bass and. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've been playing washboard for like 20, it's more than 20 years now. And um, I run a page called, um, let's see, is it Zydeco? God, how old my memory's going. <laughs> um, Zydeco Creole um, Cajun music. And um, it's weird because I'm here in Kansas and it's probably got going on to 2,000 members, and they're from like Texas, Louisiana and stuff, and I'm the administrator for this page, and I'm sure everybody on there knows more, way, way more about Zydeco than I do. So, so that's pretty interesting. If you're on Facebook, look up um, Zydeco Cajun Creole Music, and uh, you know, follow it. It's, it's really interesting. It's like, it's like a whole other world. Um, all right, I'm done that one. 
just to confirm it is Zydeco Cajun Creole music. I found it. So, well, that is fantastic. I know, um, you know, uh, it, it has been a very active time. I feel like, especially since the pandemic, there's been a lot of uh, different ways of working. And I know that uh, it's maybe similarly for you, Barry, uh, playing electronic music, it kind of, I kind of felt like I had a leg up. So when the pandemic hit, I was already used to collaborating online. I was already playing electronic music so that I could plug right in. Um, and how uh, I felt like, uh, obviously the pandemic was bad for a number of reasons. And it's a super creative time. And so I think similarly for me, uh, and you know, as this was all happening, I think this was the first year of the pandemic, was the first year of uh, Black Lawrence is uh, facilitating a $40,000 grant from the uh, Hall Center up at KU, centered around digital storytelling. And my project is one of three uh, that is being sponsored by that grant. Um, and I will be wrapping up that project this year. It's really exciting. Um, I've been interviewing families that have been impacted by police brutality and turning their uh, their accounts into verses of a song and I'm creating a short experimental music documentary um, around some of those interviews and just, uh, you know, kind of what makes, what about the people and the communities and their families, like all the kind of extra ripples that happen um, after these, these violent contacts. And so um, just kind of wanting, wanting to celebrate that joy and that life and the things that people miss about those people and uh, so yeah, just keep a lookout for that. That'll be happening. Uh, I'm supposed to finish it this summer. So <laughs> that's, that's the timeline. That's the performance period of the grant. So um, that should be coming out. But you can find that project as well as the other two uh, funded projects, as well as uh, links to Barry's music, links to what Anthony's got going on as well. I think, we, I don't know if we've linked Witness yet, but um, on our on our website, blacklawrence.org. So please uh, keep keep um, up with us on our socials on blacklawrence.org. Um, you know to find out kind of where these projects are going and where our next shows and stuff are. Which speaking of next shows, um, we did mention we do have the open mic on Friday, February second. Um, we do have other shows and performances coming up. I'll be at the Uptown Lounge in Kansas City on the twenty fifth this month. Uh, in promotion of the Folk Alliance International. Um, I've been selected to represent Native American music alongside Frank Wong, who's a very well-known Lakota rapper and activist. I am stoked. I cannot believe I made it in. Um, so that, that's my next show is the 25th. Um, Black Lawrence's next thing is February 2nd. But do you guys have other things coming up that you'd like to specifically? Uh. Well, that's um, Mardi Gras season's coming up, and so there's a demand for Zydeco. I know with the Kansas City band I play with, we're gonna be doing lots of shows around Kansas City. Um, I don't think me and Tommy have anything lined up yet, but, so if you need a Zydeco band for Mardi Gras, let's call. <laughs> um, what about you? I don't think I have any events coming up. about being on television. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was a whole... Um, yeah, so I, I was on the news last week. Friday. No, wait, it was just it was just Friday. It's been a long weekend. Yes, um, yes um, I also got a concussion last week, so excuse my memory. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that was really cool. I got to um, kind of talk about what makes... Um, I play synthesizers. That's not what I'm going to play today. But when you come to see me um, at night shows and stuff like that, I'm usually on synthesizers. And uh, yeah, just kind of taking native music, so those pentatonic scales, repetitive rhythms and lyrics, and traditional topics, and setting those to electronic music. I sometimes play with my bandmate, Mike Quillen. I don't know if he'll be joining me on the 25th, but uh, he's about at half my shows. Um, and yeah, I just have a lot of fun representing Alaska Native women in electronic music and showing that Native music is still here and also that there's a lot of combinations between Black traditional musics and Indigenous music also from around the world. Um, I think the last thing I'll say about the, the news appearance is, is I really want people to watch the movie Rumble. It's about, uh, it's a doc music documentary about how Black and Native music is American music and set up the roots of everything we consider to be American music, from blues, jazz, zydeco, all that stuff. So um, if, you, if, if, if you have
have a, a time to watch that movie. I think it's about two hours. It's, it's documentary length. <laughs> that is definitely one I would I would uh, surprise watching. Yeah, rumble like rumble and tumble. But yeah, without further ado, we're going to jump into this open mic. Um, we have a couple of us here. We, we usually kick it off us Black Hornet members, and then we kick it over to the to the audience. And uh, yeah, one of us prefer to go first. Where we going? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're all nervous. should have one of these in their living room. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, it's a machine, you put sounds in it, and it plays it back, and plays it over and over again, and uh, you can add stuff to it and take stuff away. Uh, the guy that was playing here earlier with the, the screen and stuff, he was doing electronic loop music, and uh, he was doing ambient stuff, it was really cool. And that's that's my goal, is to eventually be doing crazy psychedelic stuff with the instrument. Crazy psychedelic vis visuals. Vis vis visuals going on. All right. So, let's do this. I've already put some sounds in here, so I'm going to have to, have to watch me make the sausage.
shine so bright, never again will we fear the night. And we'll learn to love like we've never loved before. And we'll love and love and learn to love some more. And we'll learn just what it is to be human so that we can keep on moving. So turn from greed and hate, graduate to a better place. We will live forever here in our humble little space. Something fundamental has been revealed to me over and over and over again. Truth is born from fire. Brimstone is actually unnecessary. I want my words, my dance, my song, my art, and the very beats of my heart to be warm with truth, honeyed with honesty and compassion, they are not a hellfire. I'm not a demon and I don't wish you any harm. My light is a sacred flame that I choose to wield. And I've realized too that many that want to face me wish to snuff me out for simply burning bright. So every time I speak, it is an experiment. It's a test determining whether or not the truth will destroy me or set me. for that. Often I think we think about Black Sci-Fi, Black Panther. Uh, and that's true on level for me. I think another way that it manifests for me is I really enjoy spooky things. Um, I write about ghosts and hauntings. Um, probably a third way that shows up is I become much more of a doomsday girl. <laughs> um, not that I try to think about death a lot, but um, the climate in particular is something that I'm really concerned with. Um, and, and just really the, the ideas of what apocalypse could be are things that kind of surround you, if you especially if you are black and southern and grow, like if grow up in the church. Um, this poem is called The Climate Has Changed. Because there is no hoax in orcas spattering boats or scarlet skies from wildfires, there is no need to lie about laborers or, corru or corrupted lobbyists, polluted water pipes, or fading ice caps. I don't desire to carry doom on my back. I just want to write a poem about how much time we probably have left, but I'm afraid I don't have enough time. have 
we have three people signed up for, or three people present for our open mic, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, cool. I can read the poem while we, I can read the poem while we figure out. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll read two more poems and then um, I know Alex, you want to bring something for us and we can um, have those of us who've come to read and share too. Um, yeah, I'll read two more. This one's called History Lesson. There will always be two kinds of stories we can tell about yesterday that tells us something about who we are today. Because the past is indeed our present and the stories that we tell are a bridge. One story is said to be brave. Filled with heroes, ramparts, red glare, and rising action, it, it really makes for great film. You can cast your favorite white men to so play history's favorite white men, and it may warm your heart, and it may even bring you to tears. It's a story that we've all, that we've always told, though, about wars fought over, won over people and lands and properties, people made into properties, over vast seas, over spices, herbs, and ego, on misnamed lands with unnamed people with misnamed ones, violence begetting violence, begetting violence, named as valor. The other is told by the brain. Tongues come untied, but it's complicated, it's messy. Filled with horrors and breakthroughs and innovations divine, but also honors about folks making homes, horrors of running and hiding, terrors. This story is said to induce shame, and it's illegal. <laughs> it's ironic, right, that we make people endure things that we have no guts to hear about or talk about, and we cannot bear the silence, though. We cannot bear the silence. It is something that we cannot bear. One thing that we can, though, is bear a story of hope, a story about our freedom, a story of freedom struggles born of long summers in the deep south, from the grounds tilled by sharecroppers, from the veins of a bleeding Kansas, with the eerie shine of a golden coast of the west. This story bridges me to you, us to each other, others to the beyond. This story is hard to share, but it's honest. Our stories can be bountiful and like a good meal, sharing the story and saying the names of the ones who've been lost and the ones who are here, that their stories may live, we will be better for it. Um, I think the last one I want to read is this. You, both of you kept saying electronic music. Um, I don't have any electronic music to present today. <laughs> um, a uh, small thing you asked about things we're working on in the future. Um, across the past year, two years probably, I've been very, very interested in disco and funk. Um, across my life, I have, but there's a, a now a kind of a um, intellectual and, and, and research-driven kind of interest on one level and personal interest that's is much more personal now. Um, at one point, it was just I was listening to the music of my families, right? Um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, um, Aretha Franklin. If, if, if you don't know about, Earth, um, about Aretha Franklin's disco era, jump to it is that one. She was that girl. Um, but, but two, now more for, for myself, um, I've been looking back at the music of, of, of Sylvester <laughs> and of Cool and the Gang and, and just really paying attention to what were we doing when we wanted disco? And why is disco even coming back? So like the song back on 74 right now is a disco song. <laughs> that, that is actually what we're experiencing. And some of this is because we're experiencing a doom that we want to evade and escape. Um, and two, some of this is because we are dealing with so many different kinds of stresses and so many different kinds of pressures that we, that we require and need release. So I wrote a poem called Release. 
Song that's inspired by this kind of song that is just the fact of healing. Release that thing that's been holding you, that comes with conditions you never agreed. Its warm embrace may be your demise. Release that hidden thing, that closeted thing you shuffled away, that hidden thing you hid away just to hide yourself. Release that trapped thing, the shackled thing, that carceral shit, that locked up thing. There. I, I want you to have a key. Here's a key. I want you to free it, release it, and for a shot of secure. Release that broken thing, that broke thing, that broke down thing, that thing that keeps, just keeps messing up, that pattern, that one, that one cycle that you keep returning to. Let's release that. Release it. Go ahead. Release it. Release that worrisome thing that got you up at night with your chest, with your chest tight, questioning who you are or people who don't know who they are. Defining anything without proof is so, so dangerous, beloved. Release that thing whose grin you question whose words are empty. You deserve words of fullness and wholeness. You know that they mean you no good. Trust that you'll find truth. Trust that you'll find a good friend, that you can be loved without limits. Release that thing that, that you're afraid defines you. You are a soul of light and you are a dream spun together. You are a genius and effervescence. And sometimes, yes, rage and blood and love and joy. So release any fear that maims your big dreams, and you'll release yourself. Thank you.
called Red and Black. Um, and yeah, so we're going to move on to the rest of the folks here. So we'll have to see who's here. The first person I have is there. are free. We brought, we brought these because, you know, it's a birthday today. Um, the t-shirts are the only thing we charge for. Um, so please check these out too before you go. So Sweet. please pick up. Yeah, we got cards. We got cool stickers. Thank you, man. You like set that whole trajectory of, of the things you remember. Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, so I signed up on their bear. That's me. That's my nickname. So that's what I go by. So yeah. Uh, I've definitely been interested in this group, Martin Luther King. He's a really big inspiration for me just because of what he did for the civil rights and just any human rights in general. I'm a big supporter of, so yeah, a uh, big thing about Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. that I don't really know about was he definitely a, was a big advocate for uh, reading the Bible and stuff. And I didn't know that because I see quotes and stuff over at uh, Camp City where he's got like, Martin Luther King Street or something, or by 7th Street, like Power and Light. Yeah, so I've been doing my research, kind of looking at when his birthday was, his real name was actually like Michael, I guess. So he changed it to Martin because of the bishop, or not a bishop, the priest, his name was Martin Luther. So I think that's true. I don't know. Do you guys know? Yes. Is that true? I've never heard Yes. Okay, yeah, so real name's yeah, Michael. Yeah, he didn't know the name Martin until Real name's Michael. I know. It's, yeah, that's amazing. So that's pretty pretty cool for me. And I have a couple things I write in my phone. But recently, I myself was involved with like actual, I would define it as police misconduct and excessive force. I haven't written anything about that, but I might talk about that too, because that's important to put the community. It just wasn't here in town, it was like a of town. So let me see if I have something I uh, took a screenshot. A couple things I read. <laughs> yeah, this was a uh, uh, kind of personal, but I I titled it um, titled it mystery. So this is what I wrote on November 19th, 2023 at 3.31 p.m. So I wrote, uh, in times of need, one looks for comfort, comfort and familiar. Uh, so then I say, uh, familia, because I'm Hispanic, is that which one relates, you know? Uh, but is it true that a family uh, can be bought? Uh, that's the real mystery uh, for me. I wrote, like, I'll feed you uh, if you do what I say. I'll love you if you make me proud. Uh, conditional love uh, seems very typical, especially in this life, uh, living on, on, on this planet. So uh, the greatest mystery uh, for me is uh, really it's an open book, you know, and, and I'm concluding this uh, poem for some reason. Uh, it says, perhaps it's something that you must lose to find. So for me, I have lost my life uh, trying to find it, but that's where I get to fully um, appreciate and live in the truth that you are supposed to lose your life to find it in Christ and what it is that I believe, which is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And 
that's the thing. I, I didn't grow up in a church at all. I did not. Uh, my parents were not supporting it at all. All I know is that the Bible is one of the most famous books ever written of all time. No other book has ever sold more books than the Bible. So for me, it says to seek first the kingdom of heaven. And if that is true, and if that is the Bible, then nothing else is more important than reading the Bible. So that's pretty much my, my speech is yes, I'm a human rights activist and I believe in the Bible. And Martin Luther King, right man of God, read the Bible. So that's about it. I gotta go catch a bus though. Brian. Uh, last name is uh, Wolf. In relation to the, uh, the uh, Canis Lupus. Just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> it's one more famous uh, cousin. I don't, I'm not a really a poet. Uh, I, I do dabble in poetry. I'm more of a musician. So I thought I would uh, sing a song. But uh, I'd also, I'd signed up to do a poem uh, thinking that you know, I wasn't uh, really ready to sing a song. I didn't, hadn't really written a song. And I didn't write a poem, but I was going to sing, um, I mean, I was going to read a poem by someone I brought to. Uh, Wellington's book with me. I was thinking I'd read one of those, but since he's here, I won't do that. And since, uh, I mean, that's, you know, you really, really wanted me to. I'm sure I didn't do as good a job reading it as you would. But uh, I do have, uh, um, I selected this um, poem by Langston Hughes called Dream Variations that I thought I'd read. And probably some of you are familiar with it. And that goes like, To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done, then rest a cool evening beneath the tall tree, while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream. To fling my arms wide the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done, rest at pale evening, a tall, slim tree, night coming tenderly, black. songs is uh, by the band U2 who wrote a couple of songs about Martin Luther King Jr. So I thought I'd sing one of my favorites.
goods on Independence Day stained my teeth, causing cotton mouth that prevented my speech. The bomb pops melted in this new age freedom summer sun, sealing my fingers in a permanent fist. I kept that balled up fist in earlier years in that small, small town, deep in my hoodie pocket. But it was there, waiting to rise up one day. Did the red and blue frosting stick to the roofs of their mouths like it did mine? Of course not. They washed it down with a glass of all-American lemonade from a stand. Fifty cents, two quarters, maybe five dimes. Black problems washed away and swallowed for fifty cents, fifty seconds. How much is the cost of being seen as fully human? How much is the cost to be seen as innocent, relatable, a friend, American? How much time must be spent recycling old ways and old times? I can't hide my fist anymore. My blazer doesn't have pockets. And the next time I am offered treats covered in excessive amounts of red and white to cover the truth, well, I will not. Black Women's, Mid the Midwestern Mixed Black Women's Almanac, which I last read at the Lawrence Art Center, so bear with me as I haven't looked at this one in a while. This poem is entitled Indoctrination Nation. Like a magician with a mouth coil, I pull a seemingly never-ending American flag from my mouth. Pulling, 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 regurgitating American myths that were forced down still to taste necessary evils masked as patriotism by a failed human race. When is evil necessary? Why is evil necessary? Gunboat stickers on a country shop window, one different among, among the others, reads, In God we trust. In irony we must break down this my country, tis of thee, never intended for me. No, not my country at all, or yours, if you would only turn to see. 
and overwhelming reality. Still, I reject the mass mentality. You're easy to swallow patriotic cake at the ice cream social, digestible, comfortable, deplorable. I pledge alliance to you. I pledge alliance to me. I pledge alliance to all Americans, the citizens, the immigrants, very weight of truth, the broken folklore that don't work no more, of the red, the whites, and the lives of blue. For all I care, call me an angry black woman screaming from the roof. Leave behind longing for a country that never was. Forget these age-old lies. God bless America. Thank you. open mic in February, I have a poem about the irony of Black Americans celebrating the 4th of July, and I use cake and certain things to kind of like, so we might have something in common, um, so let's definitely connect on that, um, but huge thanks to Brian, um, I think we, I think Bear uh, left, uh, but Barry and Anthony too for sharing everything today, that was really awesome, so yeah, I'm going to have a lot say, um, is there anybody else in the space that has something to share, whether it's a piece or announcements, upcoming events, things like that that you want to put on people's radar again? And if you don't want to stand up here to say it, I can bring the mic to you. <laughs> so. recent book about the life of Margaret Walker, so stay tuned for that. I know uh, there's a video piece about, um, I think, of her speaking at the Spencer Museum of Art right now to play the Black, um, the Black Friday exhibit, which uh, we have other events coming up too, so we'll, we'll keep that on our radar. Any other events or things, pieces to share? I didn't mean to cut off the open mic in case there was any more. All right. Um, I will remind everybody we do have our next open mic is Friday, February 2nd at the 10th and Mass Street Studios <coughs> in collaboration with Lawrence Art Center. Um, and we do have some events coming up with the Spencer Museum of Art with their um, our events with Black Friday exhibit have ended, but there's an NXL exhibit coming in next, um, coming in starting next month. And uh, so keep an eye out for those events that'll be coming up. I know me and Anthony have a joint event. We have also a protest sign and a protest. Uh, I don't know. We, have public we have like, yeah, we're, it'll be an interactive workshop, one of these. Yeah, yeah. it'll be really great. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but for real, I, I do recall the, um, the, the protest art piece yes. being, being well, central. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be having some of those opportunities. And, uh, and like I said, I'm playing in Kansas City on the 25th um, and stuff, so please follow us on socials if you haven't. Please check out our website to see our other artists doing great work. Um, Barry or Anthony, anything else to announce? No, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um, join in, it's fun. Yeah. Don't take any social media seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for coming. So, if you want to come up and talk to us, I have to pass this.